Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the temperature pattern as well as our severe weather pattern. So basically our upcoming pattern as a whole, but I'll be taking a look at both temperature patterns and our severe weather pattern. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family and social medias. Today's question of the day is which fast food chain do you think is the absolute best? I'm going to have to go with Chick-fil-A. I think it's just awesome quality food, but I want to know what you guys think. All right, let's get right into things. So we're looking at our temperature pattern here, uh, and this is going to be for today, actually. So we're taking a look at today, March 10th, and we can see that there is a lot of warmth there for the East Coast. It's been quite nice. Obviously, the only thing is that's a downside for some of us is that the allergies are really getting to a fast start, and that's aggravating me a lot because I have bad allergies. But we do see some cold to the north up there in Canada and down there for some of the Midwest as well, dipping down. Uh, but really, the trend is a warm east coast with kind of a cold northwest and midwest and a warm southwest as well. Let's move on, and this is going to be towards about Wednesday, which is going to be tomorrow from the time I'm making this video. Very, very early, like 2 a.m., maybe even uh, a little bit later into Tuesday for the west coast there. Uh, but we see a lot of warmth down there for the south central and southeastern United States, as well as the northeastern United States. And really... This look is a torch look, which means there's not really any cold anywhere. It's basically warm from seaboard to seaboard. Very, very warm look here. But this isn't the upcoming pattern yet. This is kind of what we're in right now. Uh, and as we move forward, we're going to take a better look at what I expect to really set in. And it's actually going to lead to some severe weather, I believe. All right, so here we go. We're going to take a look here at Thursday, and we can see that the actual heart of the warmth actually moves more towards the central United States, uh, and we do see some cold air there for the northwestern United States, but the southeast and the southwest are all warm, and then even the northeast for most areas, except for maybe Maine there, uh, and this is about 2 a.m. on Thursday. Let's go ahead and move on towards Friday morning, and we can see something very interesting happens. Some cold begins to make its way into the Midwest. And the interesting thing here is if you looked at my spring forecast, this plays along with that nicely. I expected some colder temperatures there for the north central United States, maybe even the northwest, but mostly the north central United States, and then warmth down there for the southeast and up through the mid-Atlantic. And I believe this is what's really going to lead to a lot of severe weather this season is the enhanced uh, cold air to the north and the enhanced warmth to the south leads to a lot of cold fronts coming through and just, it's it's nasty. It leads to very nasty severe weather events some in, in most cases here. Uh, so this is by Friday, but really it's as we head towards Saturday, we start to see this pattern really set in uh, with the warmth to the south, cold to the north, but it really hasn't come together yet. Uh, so we're going to move on here soon through this weekend and start moving to some further dates. We're going to take a look at Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and that's when we're really going to start to see this upcoming pattern really come together, the one that I'm expecting that should lead to some severe weather chances. Now, I must also mention that on day three, which I believe, let's see, Monday, Wednesday, I think Thursday into Friday, we are going to have a pretty good severe weather chance for some areas. That's going to be at the end of the video. I'm going to briefly show that to you guys. So stay tuned for that. I do think that we will have a slight risk on that day, and I think it could be another big tornado day. Uh, so we're definitely going to need to be on the lookout for that. And if that is the case, I definitely will be going live uh, as well. So be on the lookout for that as well. So here we go. We're going to look at Sunday and it's really starting to come together. The deep south is getting further above normal as far as temperatures and we see the cold really digging into the north. Montana, Idaho, Washington by this point, I mean you're 12 to 20 degrees Celsius below average, maybe even more. So frigid, frigid air up there uh, and definitely some very warm humid air down there for the deep south. Uh, let's go ahead and move on towards Monday at about 8 a.m. And that's going to be Eastern Standard Time. Uh, so obviously you can adjust to where you live. You can adjust that time. Uh, but it's going to be about 8 a.m. On, on the East Coast there. Uh, and we see that the warmth down there in the Deep South is actually creeping further north. We see Oklahoma, Kansas getting in on some of that very far above normal temperatures. And the, the up to the Midwest, we see the colder temperatures really starting to dig down further. And this is the upcoming pattern that I'm talking about. When the cold air and the warm air become very close together, and we see a lot of cold fronts coming through, leading to thunderstorms a lot of the time. Uh, we see a lot of instability around frontal boundary zones, and this is where we see a lot of 
of air making its way up, we see lift, and this leads to thunderstorm development. And that's why I think the more cold fronts we see, the more severe weather chances we will see. Here's Tuesday, and this is going to be by about 2 a.m. on Tuesday. And if it's if you're uh, on the West Coast or in the central United States, you're probably looking at about uh, still uh, this will be maybe Monday night. But this is Tuesday by about 2 a.m. on the East Coast. And we see that the cold air really makes its way and really touches the above normal temperatures here because we see Nebraska is above or below average temperatures. And then all the way down there in Kansas, it's far above normal temperatures. So we see that the boundary for cold uh, and warm air becomes very, very close together. So I think we could see some big severe weather events if this becomes the case. Uh, especially there on this frame, I would say, the place that's most at risk is somewhere between Nebraska and Kansas and Missouri there, as well as Iowa. Now, we're about to take a look at that simulated radar for that same frame and then our convective available potential energy just to see how much severe weather is possible from the 16th in through the 17th. I think that's a day that we definitely need to pay attention to moving forward. All right, so first off, here's that simulated radar, uh, and we can see that there is going to be some yellows popping up for Missouri, Kansas, and even some yellows down there for Texas, but I mostly think Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri hold the best chance for severe weather on this date. Again, the warmth is really close to the cold air, and we see a frontal boundary coming through, uh, so definitely a big chance day if this was to pan out this way, which the chances are moderate. Uh, it definitely could show up in a little bit of a different location, but I think that there is, the ingredients are there for now. It's 168 hours out, which is a bit far, obviously, uh, that's seven days out, but definitely I think there is uh, a chance for the seven, 16th through the 17th, six to seven days out. Uh, and then here's your convective available potential energy. We can see plenty down there for Texas, Oklahoma, and southern Kansas, as well as some of southern Missouri as well. So I definitely think this is a day that we should pay attention to. The 16th in through the 17th could have some severe weather development. Uh, I, as of right now, I think there's a great chance for at least a marginal risk, and a slight risk uh, could definitely be possible there, which is enough for a lot of severe weather, obviously. Now let's take a look at that temperature pattern for the 18th here, which is going to be a Wednesday, and we can see it's still that same thing, the cold really close to the warmth there. Let's take a look at that simulated radar once again, and now we're seeing those oranges all the way up into Pennsylvania, Kentucky, down through Arkansas. This could be a very south to north type event, and that's what I'm thinking with the cold coming into the west and central United States and then the warmth really just being an east coast thing. It's going to be more of a frontal boundary that extends from south to north, which could lead to a very linear severe weather event. It's going to be interesting to see how that would play out if that was the case, and that's what really the biggest threat with this temperature pattern is, in my opinion. Now we're about to take a look at the last final days I have to show you guys on this model run. We're going to take a look at some more temperature patterns and a couple more severe weather risks that are pretty far out, so pretty moderate. And then we're also going to take a look at that day three severe weather outlook here, just so I can give you guys a brief overview of what I'm thinking with that. And then we'll get to our comment of the day. So here's that temperature pattern for the 19th, and this is going to be on Thursday, probably more like the afternoon time on the East Coast and then more of the morning time on the West Coast there. Uh, but the interesting thing here is that, again, we're seeing it from west to east, uh, and the front would line up from south to north, which would be very interesting to see play out here. Um, we would see a larger area of severe weather if that was the case. Uh, but here's that simulated radar for that frame. We see some oranges down there for Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana. But again, the location doesn't really matter. It's just that more of there is some thunderstorms, and that's the most important part this far out. Cape is quite minimal, though, as we take a look at that here. Uh, so, you know... Uh, we'll just have to see how that plays out. Let's take a look at the 21st here, and the temperature pattern is moving further east here, but we're 276 hours out, so it's getting a little bit harder to predict here, but more of the central United States is the heart of the cold, and then the heart of the warmth is there exclusively for the southeast by that point. Here's that simulated radar, so we would see oranges there for Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas if this was the case. And here's that cape, again, quite minimal, except for down there in Texas. 
So here's your day three risk that I wanted to show you guys. As of right now, we only have a marginal risk for day three. And the interesting thing here is this sets up perfectly with where I'm expecting the most severe weather this year. If you've keeping up to date with my severe weather outlook uh, for 2020 and then also my spring outlook for 2020, you would see that I was expecting the most severe weather to be kind of in this area, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Arkansas. And we're seeing another marginal to slight risk here uh, that could play out to be interesting. The Storm Prediction Center is eyeballing the chance for some supercells on day three, which would be Thursday into Friday. Uh, and also, tornadoes is a threat for this day. And I expect that this could go up to a slight risk in the coming days uh, just because of the ingredients there. So we're going to need to watch Thursday into Friday. I might be going live that day if we do see uh, a substantial amount of severe weather risk that day. Now, for your comment of the day, uh, this one comes from It's Gabriel Mank. I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Uh, I asked what your favorite show was, and he said, My favorite show of all time is The Walking Dead. Um, and I absolutely love that show, but I wanted to see if anybody would guess my favorite show. Nobody did. This is actually my second favorite show, but my favorite show is Lost. Let me know if you've seen the show Lost. It's kind of a little bit old at this point. I think it ended in like 2010 or something, but I absolutely loved that show. So let me know if you guys watched that show too. It was great in my opinion. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media, and I will see you guys in the next video.